Hello and welcome. I am Vishwanath M. In this video, uh, let us try to learn and understand the seventh program of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Laboratory of uh, VTU. Uh, the program is titled The Comparison of K Means versus EM. Uh, the detailed question can be read in the syllabus. Uh, let us get a basic introduction of what clustering means. So, clustering is the task of dividing the population or the data, data points into a number of groups. Number of uh, groups are also called as clusters. So group and cluster are almost synonymous. Okay, now what is the specialty of these clusters? The data points within the same cluster will be similar to each other and the data points between the clusters, that is a data point in one cluster compared with the data point in another cluster will be dissimilar. That is a basic meaning of clustering. Now uh, in this program we are exploring about two uh, clustering algorithms. One is EM algorithm, another one is K-means. Uh, more information about EM algorithm can be found in the uh, module 4 of theory. Let us get a basic meaning or understanding of what this EM means. EM uh, stands for expectations, expectation and maximization. It is a two-step algorithm. Uh, basically the expectation step we find the expected values, we calculate the expected values using the current hypothesis. After that, uh, we have already learned a little bit about this maximum likelihood hypothesis. So we, uh, we calculate the new maximum likelihood hypothesis and then use this newly calculated hypothesis as the hypothesis and we will iterate through this. So in the first step we find the expected values and in second step we maximize it. In, in other words, we are uh, we uh, by iterating it, we are improving the clustering uh, performance or accuracy. This is what happens in EM algorithm. Now, K means is also a very popular algorithm. K is like the number of means or the number of clusters, number of centroids, as we can say, and means is what we uh, use. That is, it can either be mean or it can be centroid or things like that. Okay. Now, uh, the algorithm itself is actually simple. Uh, initially, we assume or we initialize a uh, k points as the clusters. So as you can see these, if all the dots represent the data points. Let us just assume that these three stars here, they represent the initial clusters. What we do is we calculate the distance between the data points and the cluster centers or the centroids and we obtain the new centroid. So the uh, perfect uh, in detail working of this algorithm can be found in many uh, sources. Uh, so basically we find the new cluster centroids. So uh, assuming that we have done the basic uh, calculation of distance and we have found the new cluster centroids as these square boxes. So now the centroids are shifted. So we uh, again we do the same thing for the new centroid values. Now these whatever earlier centroid values will have no meaning. The new centroid values will get the importance and we will repeat the same thing. This will be done until the cluster centers don't change. In other words, we have got the correct cluster centers and we have ultimately divided. So basically in the entire clustering what we do is we divide the population into a number of clusters. So that is all about the introduction about this program. Now this program is actually very simple. Uh, there are a few variations of the program but the one uh, we are using here is uh, one of the simplest one. Now let us uh, just uh, directly dive into the program. There are a lot of import statements here because the program statement allows us to use the respective Java or Python packages for what I mean for the implementation of k-means and em. That is why we have a lot of import statement here. Now matplotlib.py plot it is required for any type of plots or uh, graphs whatever we plot. So this is the first import statement. Now sklearn we are importing data sets. Data set because we use this standard data set for iris. And uh, the title itself says that we have two algorithms, one is k-means, another one is uh, uh, expectation and mag maximization. Now k-means is available in this sklearn.cluster, uh, so this is the statement to import it and this Gaussian mixture refers to this EM itself. And uh, we also import from sklearn.metrics, so metrics is like the accuracy measure, so we, these are all just the alias names, in, in, we can directly use sklearn.metrics instead of we just use sm in the program uh, later. So and of course for uh, for the processing of arrays we need numpy and pandas packages for processing data frames. 
now we will understand why these are required in the program anyway the first step is basically we are loading the data set now data sets is what is imported from sklr we are calling the function load iris so this will load the iris data set into this variable what we do next is we process the data set as pandas data frame so why is pandas preferred here is uh, pandas allows us to name the uh, columns with our uh, user specific names and it will allow us to access using those names itself so x is equals to pd dot data frame of iris dot data now iris data set we have already learned in detail in one of the previous videos this iris data set basically contains four data columns and one target column so four data column refer to these things sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width uh, iris is basically a flowery uh, plant and these are the features or the attributes so what we do we have the four column names sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and there is one target target basically is the uh, numerical value 0 1 2 uh, where 0 stands for setosa 1 stands for versicolor and uh, 2 stands for virginica they are the three classes of these flowers now the uh, detailed explanation can be seen in the video where i have explained this iris data set in detail so we have just uh, created x and y variables here and we have uh, understood what is happening in this part of the code after we have uh, created x and y we are just printing so so this data set itself is uh, the, the output statement is itself self explanatory this is what i tried to explain so this is the data set it contains four columns there are numerical values and the output this is the target column i have just separated so this is the basically the y variable so they are just values like zero uh, it is totally has 150 rows all are not visible here so there are some value uh, rows with uh, value as one and some with two so as I said, there are the three classes of the flowers. Zero corresponds to setosa, one corresponds to versicolor, and two for virginica. So this is x and y. Now we have understood the program up to here. Next, what is this color map? Color map is just an array. Uh, we are creating np dot array, and we are just creating. We are just uh, uh, initializing, or we are just specifying three colors: red, lime, and black. So we can see in the uh, later on in the program that we are basically plotting graphs. So we can understand that we are we are having three colors because the target has three types of values so we can understand red for zero that is setosa and the line for one that is versicolor and black for two that is virginica basically they are all different classes of flowers or different types of flowers okay now color map is understood initially uh, we will just plot the real clustering in other words see uh, subplot 1 comma 2 comma 1 basically this uh, the last value 1 basically means this is the first plot okay and uh, 1 to 1 is like a thing we can remember Sub, so plt dot subplot more information can be obtained by exploring this uh, matplotlib dot pyplot uh, uh, reference which is available online anyway by just uh, calling these functions plt dot subplot of 1 comma 2 comma 1 basically we are just creating an empty box this is the first box and uh, this is the first uh, plot so that is why the uh, last column is having one and last column can have only values one or two and again we have to start with one or it can be two anyway now what we are plotting so this is a scatter plot so this is a scatter plot it is self explanatory there are other types of plots too but there is in scatter for the purpose of we are trying to uh, use these two features that is petal length and petal width petal length and petal width we are using those two features and we are plotting while plotting we are we take the target values that is what is the target value it is either 0 1 2 so color map of target means in a way we are just creating a reference so 0 for red 1 for uh, lime and 2 for black so what is happening in this part of the uh, in this in this line of code is we are using the two values petal length and petal width so petal length is like the x axis values petal width uh, petal uh, width is like the y axis values this is x this is y and whatever we get the point that we will decide the color based on we will decide the color based on the color map so that is what is happening in this line of code now the important thing because uh, this program is very easy because there is a uh, specific pattern which is very easy to remember now see uh, 
PLD dot whatever we saw here, this will, re will repeat three times. The only change happens in this part of the code. Color map of initially we just use the Y dot targets. In other words, we are using the uh, actual data set itself. So this is real clustering or actual clustering we can say. So this is what is occurring in the data set. This is uh, the like we can we can understand for the uh, for the class which correspond to red. By red I mean 0, 0 means setosa. So setosa will have the uh, petal length and petal width between this range. So petal length can go up to 2 cm and uh, petal width may be up to 1.5. So this is what this graph means. Anyway that is not that necessary to know. So basically we were just plotted the x petal length and petal width with ref uh, keeping the color map uh, keeping the color map with reference to the output itself that is uh, the known values y dot targets that is what we are doing in the first plot and we are giving it a title real clustering after that we come into the program so we first train or we just create one model which is using k-means so this k-means is already imported all the work will be done in the background by calling this uh, uh, method or function so we are not implementing it that is why this program is actually easy and we know that for k-means we need the k value that is the number of clusters so 10 clusters is equals to 3 so we are just passing 3 because there are three sets of class so what it will do it will just create one model and we fit the model for the data that is uh, data is the data is the four columns in the output these these four columns refers to data and this is the target okay now we have just fit the model for k means after after we have fit the model what we do we compare the real clustering and k means clustering so everything repeat, uh, repeats it's just that the number for the last parameter becomes 2 now because that is the second subplot and the only change occurs here in the color map whatever the model one is we have uh, whatever the model we have prepared we are using the model and we are uh, accessing the variable called labels so basically this will give the output column whatever according to the k means model so model 1 dot labels i have uh, actually printed it here k means model 1 dot labels we can just appreciate the output so k means it is so this is the this is what is contained in the model 1 dot labels so it is containing 0 1 2 values okay so now we have understood that initially we have plotted the actual target value then we have plotted the k means predicted or k means clustering values next so we are done with half of the program k means is done now next we do the same thing for uh, em that is expectation and maximization so we call this uh, function called gaussian mixture and of course we like how k means requires uh, the initial k clusters gaussian mixture uh, gaussian mixture requires a parameter called n components and we maintain 3 that is why we have used 3 is already explained now the same thing we have fit the model for the data again so data is what we have done here iris dot data so the model 2 model 2 basically refers to the em that is expectation and maximization and again whatever we did for the k-means clustering we do the same thing for em clustering as well uh, we plot a scatter plot we are taking x petal length taking the x petal length as x axis x dot petal width why is x because x is the referring to this data frame which is having the data and we are accessing this particular column petal width so x dot petal length x dot petal width comma c is equal to color map of model 2 dot predict of x now as i said the only change occurs in this particular uh, well, in this particular part of the code c is equal to color map of y dot target targets c is equal to color map of model 1 dot labels underscore and model 2 dot predict of x in other words the c, uh, it, it gives the same meaning whatever model 1 dot labels did for k means this model 2 dot predict of x does the same thing for em clustering i have also printed what this model 2 dot predict x in the uh, output statement we can just appreciate it here uh, see uh, basically this is the y dot target s this is the model 1 dot labels and this is the uh, model 2 dot predict of x so this is the em output k means output actual output okay now we have understood the code till here now basically plt dot show is a method which will show the graph or which will display the plot now we have understood the code up to here now in the program statement 
there is a they have mentioned or they have uh, specified that we need to comment on the clustering and we need to compare the two so the same thing is done here we print the actual target by calling this iris dot target then we print the k means target by calling model one dot labels and we print the em uh, output that is the output of em by calling this uh, i have already shown the uh, meaning or what whatever this means or the output in the output below after this the, this is one important thing we need to remember uh, in order to compare the two clustering algorithms we need the accuracy so everything is done by this sklearn.metrics package which we have imported here sklearn.metrics we have imported it as sm so we are just calling sm.accuracy score and we are passing this is also self explanatory this is the uh, original data set the target value is already present and this is what it has predicted so k means we are passing the model one dot labels underscore and for em we are passing model two dot print of x so basically this will just give the accuracy values out of one we will just see the accuracy uh, before going to the accuracy let us uh, understand the output here so this is the real clustering this is what is present in the data set so this is uh, this refers to uh, zero that is setosa green refers to one that is versicolor black refers to uh, Virginica. Now you can see in K means uh, the clustering is almost matching, but we can see that there are a few green points coming at the top, which is not present here, and we can see a change in the pattern of black basically. And uh, in plus in EM clustering, we can observe that this is by just seeing the three graphs, we can understand that EM is doing a better job than this K means because we don't see any green values or line values here so the clustering of real and uh, em more or less resembles uh, there, there may be a little variation still here but as you can see here for example at this particular point there is a green dot but here we don't see that green dot so there is still a little variation but em clustering is better than k means clustering it is evident in this graph now the same can be uh, verified with the accuracy values now we can see accuracy of k means is 89, uh, 89%, 0.89 and accuracy of EM is 96%. So we have uh, done the cl clustering, we have compared the clustering and we have commented on the performance of the clustering by displaying the accuracy. By doing all this, we have satisfied all the requirements in the problem statement. This was all in this video. Thank you.